So I'm uh, I'm Mari Potts. I'm the founder of Inside Airbnb. Um, so I was uh, we were all actually told to be uh, reasonably polite, um, and so as a corporate activist, um, I'm known to try to talk a little bit less about Airbnb. Um, although you know uh, that my work is mostly about Airbnb, and um, I'll talk more about short-term rental platforms. Um, and I'm not going to talk about the sharing economy um, because um, uh, some of us know that it's not really about sharing. Um, I'm not going to talk about Uber or Biff uh, because people don't drive around houses. Um, if uh, if the Uber driver is driving around in a car, it's not displacing anyone. So I uh, hope that's okay. Um, uh, I also just wanted to reflect to back in, in January. Uh, in January, I was actually in this, this uh, building here, uh, and that, that corporate had, uh, uh, it was basically a data release. Um, and the data release involved me making an appointment with a PR person, coming into an office. Um, there was a laptop there. Um, I could. Uh, look at the laptop, it had Excel on it. Uh, I couldn't download any data. I couldn't take any screenshots. Um, and so I think on the topic of transparency, uh, I, I think that's a big fail. And, uh, and, I th and transparency is very important with housing. So I think that was a big fail. Uh, fortunately, BuzzFeed had spent uh, over a series of, of days, over a couple of weeks, they had transcribed that data um, into um, a Google spreadsheet, a Google sheet, and so fortunately I had studied that, and so when I went, um, I was just looking for specific pieces of information, and it was, a, it was the first time I, I got to speak to, I speak to some of the employees of the corporation. Um, so just, um, wanted to reflect on that. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk about the, the, short, the, the problem with short-term rental platforms. Uh, what was the problem that I saw? Uh, what did I do about it? Um, who does it empower? Um, and then what, what have some of the impacts of my project been? Um, what can you do if you want to uh, be involved, you want to use the data? Um, and then also just a little bit of a personal story about how I became passionate about the project um, and where I'm going personally. Um, so on the why there's, I, I randomly selected some advertisements from short-term rental platforms. Um, and so these are some of the, uh, these are some of the images that you might see if you are on the subway um, or you uh, read the media. Um, there's a little bit of facts in there. Um, there's some opinions, um, and a lot of the, the media campaigns around short-term rental platforms come come out when there's particular legislation or discussions in the public sphere. So either in Albany or City Hall. Um, so I think that's particularly important to note that uh, housing issues it, it, it can be highly regulated. Uh, to protect tenants and to, and to protect housing. And so there exists policy devices that can be used to protect tenants. And I think in, in the case of short-term rental platforms, we're lucky that there's New York State laws that effectively um, make absent, uh, if, if, you're, if you're renting on a short-term rental platform and you're not in your home and you're doing this permanently, uh, so that it's potentially displacing um, housing uh, that the New York State law uh, comes in. Um, so the, the, the main concerns that people have about short-term rental platforms are about displacing regular New Yorkers. Uh, it's, it's about uh, is your neighbor doing it in your building or in your street? Um, quality of life issues in terms of noise and parties. Um, there's also the level playing field against hotels, uh, the impact on hospitality workers. Um, that, that might provide cause for tenants to be evicted 
Um, and so I think there's a whole range of issues, and um, data um, is, a, is a good tool to answer some of these questions. Um, the uh, Attorney General of New York State uh, released in October 2014, this was before my project, so this is like the context that I was thinking about. They released, um, they subpoenaed um, that corporate, um, and an out of court settlement uh, data was provided to the Attorney General of New York State, to Eric Sutterman's office. Uh, they came out with this uh, long report. Uh, you can see the headline statistic that 72% of the listings from that platform were likely to be illegal according to the state laws um, and commercial in nature. Um, now, when I looked at the report, um, as someone that has a technology background, there was a lot of questions that it didn't answer. It drilled down into a few neighborhoods, but not a lot. And so that, that got me thinking um, in terms of whether I could answer more questions. Um, there have been some journalist articles. This is, um, uh, this is a screenshot of an article from Skift back from earlier in 2014. You can see some data starting to creep into the, the, the dialogue. Um, Skift actually paid a, a data scraping company to get the data. But again, not really that much data. Download the data. Um, here's, um, there's a gentleman that, that um, is from uh, Toronto named Tom Slee, and he provides these maps um, of cities around the world. Uh, he's also got open source code that lets you scrape the data yourself to compile the data. Um, but from my point of view, uh, these weren't answering questions as well. They weren't tell telling the story about what data was important. Um, and um, here's an example of some analog use of data. This is an artist in New Orleans. Uh, 2015, they went, uh, they went to the website. They mapped out all the listings they could find. They made a map. Um, they made some public art um, to really talk about the issue. Um, and um, now I'm going to talk about how I solved the solution. So th this, these are screenshots from my tool. Um, you can go uh, to insideabv.com. Um, you'll find a range of cities. It's about 30 cities. This is uh, New York City. Uh, interestingly, this is from about a year ago. So the, the, the 27,000 uh, numbers are uh, closer to 40,000 today. And I'll just cycle through, um, it's almost like some art, this is San Francisco, um, London, um, Paris, uh, Sydney, Australia, that's where I'm from, um, Barcelona. Um, and um, the tool lets you drill into neighborhoods. So this is this is the neighborhood in which I live, Bedford Stuyvesant in Central Brooklyn. Um, and this is data scraped from back in June. So there's 2,300 percent, um, and um, and that, that's a working map. So you can zoom into your street. The um, locations are slightly anonymized, um, so you won't be able to see exactly what's on your street. You'll be able to see what's what's in your immediate vicinity. Um, uh, the statistics that I expose room type. So it's very important. There were myths about um, sharing. Uh, renting out bedrooms. Um, you can see the statistics here that 42% of listings in Bedford sites are entire homes. Um, up until a few months ago, those numbers were always above 50%. Every city around the world, those numbers are above 50%. So people renting out entire apartments. So when you think about housing, there's a likely chance that um, housing can be taken off the market. Um, and this, ne this next range of statistics, and these, these are all interactive, uh, so you can click on some of those filters and the map will filter the statistics, and you can buy, combine them as well. So you could uh, click on on the, on the entire homes uh, and recent and frequently booked um, and see what the statistics are. Um, availability was a statistic that I had early on, and I recommend that people don't use it. Uh, mainly because uh, people do set calendar uh, inaccurately. So when you set up the listings, um, 
they might say that it's available, um, and then when they get a booking request, then making decisions about whether they're going to go and stay with a friend. So it's very interesting behavior, but it doesn't really speak to the core issue of how is it impacting our communities. Um, and uh, this thing's got host. This is something that has got a lot of attention recently. Uh, well, over the last uh, year or two, uh, as we discovered that people were um, hoarding apartments up to 40 or 50, in some cases in some cities it might be 200, um, uh, housing advocates and other activists in New York City have been very focused on uh, um, ensuring the city enforces and Airbnb um, uh, self enforces. Um, Airbnb usually, uh, sorry, I mentioned the name, but, um, they, uh, they frequently do enforcement, like I mentioned before, legislative and public discussion. Um, now, uh, on my website, you can also uh, download the data. Um, so, for, for cities like New York City, I've got month on month data, so you can download the data and analyze it yourself. Um, and um, I'm just going to talk quickly about who it empowers. So, I, I think a lot about the audience of the tool, um, and I've listed them through there. Um, so, the general public, residents and neighbors, uh, uh, tenants, homeowners, um, there's some housing advocates here today that that I work with, um, and um, there's uh, becoming increasingly focus on discrimination, whether it's disability based or racial discrimination, um, and um, some of the impacts. Uh, the city of San Francisco has used my data two years running to do policy analysis on the impact on affordable housing. Um, uh, some residents in, in Venice, Italy, have uh, used my data in their own advocacy about the future of that city. Um, I've submitted my data to parliamentary inquiries. Um, and this, this one is from, from New South Wales and Australia. I've also done some in, uh, in Los Angeles. Um, this is, these are some flyers that some people in uh, New Orleans use using my data. Um, and it talks, it's basically addressing to tourists uh, using some of my data. Um, and, and these are some PowerPoint slides that some people in, in Austin, Texas um, produced. Um, these are the PowerPoints that they used in, in their own legislative discussions. Um, some, some media, this is a Portland um, newspaper. A report that we put out uh, when we discovered some of the self policing that. Um, that was being done. Um, a statement from Bill de Blasio, which really talks about the impact. If, if my work is reaching him, I think I'm doing a good job. Uh, what you can do, you can uh, go to my website. You, if you're not from New York, uh, your city might be there. Uh, you can get the data yourself. Uh, and, um, and if you're interested in collaborating, come and talk to me. Um, just quickly, how I got got where I'm going, just so you understand a bit more about me. Uh, I have a technology background, but I've been involved in storytelling. So I was doing a project in Bedford Stuyvesant on people's relationship to food and food projects. I'm uh, doing oral history work. Um, also doing, these were some of the first maps I've worked with racial changes uh, in central Brooklyn. Uh, it's just before I did this project. Um, that were on public display. Um, I'm currently working on some redlining historical maps um, and doing some public art projects around redlining. So some of the origination of some of the housing issues that we have in the city or in America um, and segregation of uh, racial discrimination in housing. So that's uh, some of the work that I'm involved with.